What's going on everyone? Michael here from 3D Print Everything and today I wanted to talk about computer specs in regards to 3D printing. So what kind of computer do you need to uh, 3D print with? So um, we'll start with just the basics. If you're a new person into 3D printing and you've come to this video because you're looking to buy your first 3D printer or you've just bought your first 3D printer and your computer's not working and you're looking for what you need, we're going to go over that first. So. Uh, to begin with, um, the software that you're most likely going to be using is Kira. There are other softwares out there. There is Idea Maker. There is Prusa Slicer. Um, what these softwares are is slicers. They will take the file that you uh, have there and communicate all the settings that you set over here and save that to a little disk that you will then put into your computer or into your 3D printer so that you can print it. Now, um, Cura Slicer is probably the most universal. They support probably the most 3D printers out there. If you look, all these are different 3D printers, and many of these have multiple models in each one of them. Um, so hundreds of printers here that, that you can pick from. If it's not in here, you can build a custom profile by putting your printer's name in here and then adding its uh, sizes and whatnot, and you'll be able to get that uh, together now. Um, so, in order to run Cura and these other softwares, you don't, you do not necessarily need a really powerful computer. To do a part like this, to do little simple things you're going to find on Thingiverse, it's going to be pretty basic. Anywhere, if you're buying a brand new computer, something in the $600, $500 to $1,000 range is probably going to be enough. Um, if you're just buying something off the shelf and you don't know really anything about computers, um, at least get what I recommend as things that you could tell someone at Best Buy or something else like that. You want to get <clears throat> a decent processor, a dedicated graphics card, so you don't want like an integrated graphics card, and you would, you would prefer to have an SSD hard drive. So the SSD hard drive is real good for loading these programs and files quickly in and out of, um, you, know, you know, opening and closing them and importing files in and out of this software. It'll go faster if you're using an SSD hard drive. Um, and RAM, you're going to want at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, now, if it, it, that's just for the beginning users. If you know, you've got one 3D printer, you're doing a couple of 3D prints, um, that'll be good for you. And you don't need anything too much more powerful than that. But 16 gigs of RAM in 2020 time is not a whole lot. So if you're someone who has a few 3D printers, you, you, know, you have a computer, you bought a computer and it's still slower, and you're looking for something a little bit more specific that will get you there faster, I'll go over those specs now. So specifically, you're probably going to want a NVIDIA graphics card. Could be an AMD graphics card, but you want a graphics card that's at least a 1080 Ti to a 20 series or 30 series graphics card. So there's lots of options in the 2030, and now the 40 series is just released. You could get a 40 series graphics card. Um, any of those will work. I just recommend at least a 10 up. So a 1070 to uh, 2070 to uh, you know a 3060 or 3070 and above. At least get one with eight gigabytes of virtual RAM. Um, so I personally have a 1080 Ti and then I have, and that's in my workstation, this laptop has a 2070. Um, these are all things you can look up. If it's just numbers, you'll be able to search NVIDIA graphics card 2070. You can find these. Right now the market is really good for buying graphics cards, so if you need a graphics card, it's a good time to buy. The crypto market is down. When the crypto market goes down, the uh, price for computer components go down too. Um, now, I do recommend at least a 76K or above. You, you know, if you're buying a brand new computer, go ahead and get one of the more latest processors. Um, if you can afford more cores, more cores is more better in this cases. In these cases, more you know. I know I said that real goofy like, but but I did it on purpose. Um, the more cores you have, the faster it's going to be able to chomp through some of this compute this computational data. So this specific laptop I built with a 12 core, I would recommend a 12 to 16 core if you can get it. At least a, a four to eight core. You don't want to get a two core if you can help it. The two cores will be a little bit slower. But um, the more cores you have, the more processing you have and that's that's in relation to your cpu so so get a 12 core amd cpu get a four or eight core intel cpu um and those will be those will be good for uh for your computer and for ram i would recommend at a mid-level ram system you want to get at least 32 gigabytes of ram you will fill up 16 faster than you know what to do with 
And if you're buying RAM, RAM's not too expensive, go ahead and get a faster RAM. Get a RAM at at least 3200 megahertz. I saw a big difference going from 1800 megahertz to 3200 megahertz. So that, that megahertz is the speed at which the RAM runs. So RAM is what everything that we see is operating inside of. It's random access memory. It's memory that runs Windows, that runs this software. So if you have too many things open, your RAM is gonna run out and you will crash programs. So RAM is most of the time people's bottlenecks. Um, and, and that's generally what the first thing you need to upgrade. Now with most computers, you can upgrade it. If you're running DDR3, you definitely should be moving to DDR4. DDR4 is faster. Um, it'll support better. DDR4 is, is old now. I believe there is now DDR6 um, or 5 or whatever it is, whatever's the latest. Um, that has just come out. Um, if you're going to change the type of RAM you have, you have to change the motherboard. So the motherboard is the socket for the RAM, so, so you're going to have to make sure that you plan or buy a motherboard that has better RAM. And if you're doing that, the same socket for the CPU is, is dedicated by the motherboard. So you're either custom building a computer and getting a new you know, CPU and RAM, or you're upgrading your current, your current computer to have a little bit more RAM and a better CPU or a better graphics card. Um, either way. Um, you can custom build a laptop like I have online. I, I built this from Zotic PC. This was a Sanger um, PC, and then and then Zotic did some modifications to it. Um, so that's cool. Now, for what I am here to show you finally, so this is more for the business people. So if you're if you're a business person, then then you're gonna like this. So if you're running a lot of programs, and right now I do not have too many Curas open. I generally have 10 plus, but my computer restarted this morning. So I only have a few open, but I, I have four Curas open. I've got Idea Maker open. I have Prusa Slicer open. I also have a modest amount of tabs open. Generally, I have about triple this amount of tabs open. Um, I have Facebook, Messenger open, and Discord. So I've got a lot of apps open, and I want to show you what my usage looks like. So I have on this computer, just to show you RAM, six, uh, RAM 64 gigabytes of RAM. This is the most this uh, this this printer can handle. Uh, printer, sorry, computer. I'm getting a phone call. Um, this is the most this computer can handle, and I'm actively using 48 gigabytes of RAM right now. And that is in actually, it looks like it's decreasing a little bit. So I wonder why it's decreasing. Um, but here we can see what is using the CPU. I can you know this is Task Manager. Just right click down here, Task Manager. Um, and you can see what your computer is using as far as resources go. So Prusa Slicer alone right now is up to 15 gigabytes. So Prusa Slicer is eating up a whole lot of my RAM trying to generate the G code for this file here. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to get at is when you start getting into production prints and large prints, this is a 1200 millimeter print. So this is, this is a large print. It's almost four feet um, actually a, a, about exactly four feet and uh, yeah we need to print this so Cura has been having a hard time trying to slice this it's failed multiple times I did get idea maker to slice it so it sh showed me its version of it and I can kinda see inside here so idea maker didn't have lightning infill and that's what I want to use because if I do this this is just going to take a tremendous amount of time. I mean, we're talking 952 hours at 79 rolls of filament. Yeah, that's a lot of rolls of filament. So if I can use lightning, I probably won't be wind up using 80 rolls of filament. Maybe I'll only use 20. So that's kind of my goal here. That's what I'm trying to figure out with Prusa Slicer. And I just want, I wanted to kind of compare these three as I was doing this. And that's kind of the goal here is which one can handle bigger files. I do notice that Cura has a hard time slicing complicated things. Now, one thing, and I've mentioned this in some of my past videos, if you're using lightning infill and tree supports, that can hang up even on small printers. There's a lot of, I'm guessing, math that is going, I'm guessing, there, there's a lot of math and organic shapes that are being put into lightning infill and tree supports. And that's literally generating brand new 3D models and then creating toolpaths for it. Um, and then trying to optimize all that. So, so there's a lot of computational work that is going in there, and I can understand why it's hanging up. Um, 
Idea Maker did run through it, and it ran through it the fastest. So Idea Maker does have the fastest slicing that I've seen. So if you're doing something real big and it's going to have a heavy infill like that, then Idea Maker might be a good choice for you. Um, there's probably some settings I could use to improve there to get a quicker print time. And it looks like Prusa Slicer is about to do it. One of the limitations of Prusa Slicer right now is I'm limited to 1,000, 1,000 by 1,200 on the print size. So I can't go any bigger than that, but that does fit this print specifically just barely. So if it'll finish this, and it's been going for about five minutes, um, that would be awesome. This one has been going for quite a while now too, and it's failed about four times. So I just wanted to kind of give an update that, that um, yeah, even with, and this, when I purchased this laptop, it was several thousand dollars. With a 12-core processor, a 2070 graphics card, um, two terabytes of SSDs, and 64 gigs of RAM, I am approaching, even now, my limits of my RAM. And, and the RAM always seems to be, you know, when, when someone says, how will I ever use 32 gigabytes of RAM? Well, very quickly. I've used up to 20, 22 gigabytes just in my internet tabs. Now, granted, that's a lot of internet tabs. But I have tabs open for Amazon because I'm ordering things constantly. I have tabs open for Facebook because I'm communicating with clients there. I have three tabs open for emails. I have one tab open for a software. I have another tab open for like uh, a Thingiverse or something else. And, you know, another tab open for Tinkercad. So all these are tools and websites that I'm using on a daily as well as two or three Trello boards. You know, I'm, I'm 20 tabs in every single day just to operate my business. And that's that's how I do things. And that could be the same thing for you know, someone using Etsy or this or that or something else. So the tabs and the internet alone will start really eating up a lot of RAM space. And then, I mean, we can see right here, Google Chrome is the third and it's only using 1200 and I only have a few open. So the rest of these with these big files are really starting to eat in here. And if I get this up to like 90%, I'll probably have to stop Cura to chill it out because Prusa Slicer is, I was not expecting 21 gigabytes of RAM. That is a whole lot. Um, but with that said, this, uh, this is otherwise doing the job and I want to show you, you know, what you need if you're, if you're just doing kind of basic stuff, if you're more of a hobbyist or you're ready to kind of run a handful of machines. If, if you're wanting to run a handful of machines, a full on farm, and you're going to process big prints, especially if you're going to get a large format printer, you're going to need a powerful computer and you can build a more powerful computer than this one here. If you wanted to reach out to me, I could custom spec you out one if you need help with that. Otherwise you essentially just want to buy the best of the best and you're probably going to be spending anywhere from two to four and a half thousand dollars to uh, build a really nice computer. An average computer is anywhere from a thousand to two thousand and a, uh, you know, a below average with a starter computer is anywhere from like four to eight hundred dollars I would imagine um, but those are the ranges you can expect to be within and uh, I hope that helped illuminate and kind of show you some of the different things that still is having an issue there so we'll see what happens with this but um, yeah this is what I'm doing on a daily and what type of computer I expect and need um, when I am I am slicing things on a regular so thanks guys have a good day